All right, so welcome back. This is a really fun week and it does involve a little bit of photoshopping in order to achieve these nightmare and whimsical feels. So to kind of walk you through the whole process so that you can do these things at home, we're kind of gonna start from the beginning here. So if I go to um, deviantart.com, I can search, um, I'm just gonna search kind of one of my go-to brushes here, ghost stories, Photoshop action. It's gonna be this first one here. And as you can see, it has a lot of different really cool filters that you can use on your photos. So in order to download this, you can just hit the download button and it will download to the bottom right hand corner and you can open it up. Um, but what I did for you is I put it in the turn in folder. So I'm gonna go ahead and minimize my screens here. Go in the turn in folder and whatever class you're in, it's going to be in the resources folder. All you have to do is double click on this ATN file and you'll notice Photoshop will pop up and how you're going to see your actions is go to window actions and you'll notice um, I downloaded it twice but here's ghost stories if you ever accidentally double download it you can just click it and delete it so I have my ghost stories Photoshop action and it's very simple and easy to use if you want to practice just using just kind of an everyday image, I would suggest going to a site called unsplash.com, which is copyright free high resolution photos. And you can just start off by just Googling anything. If you just want to look up um, scary portraits, just to practice with, you can. And how you do this is you just kind of hit this download button in the bottom right hand side. It's going to download in the bottom. You open it in Photoshop and there it is. So what Photoshop actions do, um, it basically somebody created all these steps to apply to your photo. So as you have your Windows um, action up, you can click one of these so right now i'm on dark magic and all i have to do is hit the play button i'm just going to sit back let it do its thing and now it's done so sometimes these take a long time sometimes they don't what you do want to make sure is that you have your um, layers panel up so i purposely don't have mine up right now so i'm going to go up to window and i'm going to make sure my layers panel is open if for some reason your workspace doesn't look like mine, I can always reset my workspace to essentials. So I see all of my layers here and Photoshop actions, it's just kind of a default. You're going to have to go in and click the eyeballs and see what you like, what you don't like. So for example, if you don't like that color balance, you can click it on and off. You can click all these layers on and off to figure out what you want. Now, quite often, these Photoshop actions will be a little bit on the dark side, so you might have to click some of them on and off in order to get certain light in. If you want to click on your background layer and just do an overall brightness, you can adjust the photo as well in here. So you're not limited to just the layers. You can be on other things as well. So let's try another one. So here's another image. Again, to go to Actions, if your Actions panel isn't up, you're gonna to go to Window, Actions. I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger so you can see. Last time I tried Dark Magic. This time, let me try Haunted. And then hit the Play button. Let it do its thing, and now it's edited. And again, in the Layers panel, you can click the eyeballs on and off to get the feel that you want. If for some reason you make a huge mistake and you think, okay, this is not what I want, you can just open up the little history tab right next door, scroll all the way up, 
go to the original um, picture, go back to the Actions tab, and select a different one. So maybe I want to try Black Ice and hit Play. Maybe that's not what I want. Go to History, scroll all the way up, click the original image, try another one. So with practice, you'll get a little bit better at playing with Photoshop Actions. This one is pretty good. Again, I can um, turn the eyeballs on and off to get a more curated look. I kind of like the darker look on that one, so I'm going to keep that off. And I can just kind of play around with my effects, and I can scroll down and see which what each layer did. And right now, this is looking pretty good. And again, you can always click on your actual background layer and do editing. So um, let's try out some different ones here. Now, the Photoshop actions, they're not going to look all the same. So for example, if I look at this adrenaline one, I don't like it. So I'm going to go back to the history, scroll all the way up, go back to the original image, and I'm going to try something else. So I'm going to try Nightmare, hit play. This one I'm really, really liking. So um, it might take you a couple tries to see which Photoshop action you want. But it's a great way at taking photos that are really, really bright and maybe a little too happy and making them a little bit on the dark and more on the nightmare side. So, for example, this is a really bright, happy photo. Um, but with Photoshop Actions, if I have my Actions panel up, I'm going to pick Nightmare, hit play, and instantly this changes the storyline quite a bit. You could Photoshop things into this picture like bats or a bog monster or whatever you want, um, but the base picture does have to be yours. Sometimes I also do get questions about how to um, edit people's images and do tiny little things to it. So for example here, I could cut this lady out and put her in the woods. So let's go ahead and try a Photoshop action with her. So I'm going to go to Nightmare, hit play. We'll see what it looks like. Doesn't look bad. But let's just say we want to maybe color her eyes in. So we would have to be on the background there. We're going to zoom in. Again, these are high quality images. So you will see pores and things like that. You want to be on the brush tool. And let's just say we want to paint it in black. So make sure it's black. And I might have to change my brush here. So I'm going to go up to the window, brushes. And I'm going to get a nice um, soft brush here. Just pick that. Make sure you use your bracket keys to make your brush bigger or smaller. And Using a mouse, I'm just going to brush in her eye so you can see this. And I'm doing this as a demo and doing this kind of quickly. You might take a little bit more time than me. So I colored her eye in black, and it has that um, kind of soulless look to it now. But let's just say on the opposite end, you kind of wanted that milky zombie-like look. Let's go back to our history panel. And just go back a step, and there's her eye. So I'm going to switch these colors right here so that it's white. And I'm going to have that milky look. And actually, let's match her current eye color. So I'm going to take the eyedropper tool and sample her eye. Go back to the brush tool and start to paint in that area. And again, for demonstration purposes, I'm not making it totally perfect. Um, I'd probably make that a little bit darker, but you can see this has a totally different effect on the photo. Now, if you wanted to add in things like cracks, um, I do have that kind of stuff in the turn-in folder. So if I go in the turn-in folder under photo class, under resources, um, there are a bunch of Nightmare and Whimsical brushes I put in here. All you have to do is double click on any of these. So for example, if you wanted uh, the cracks, you just double click. 
and make sure you have your brush window up. If you don't, go to Window Brushes. And there's two different settings here. So you can look at each individual folder and open them up to see what they have. And for me, this is kind of a hard thing for me to look at. Or you can click the other tab that says Brush Settings, kind of scroll down here, and you see little baby icons of different kinds of shapes. And what I do for cracks and things like that I'm going to make sure that it's set to black, so I just switch the colors here. I'm going to pick this crack here, use my brackets to make them bigger, smaller, and I'm just going to put a crack kind of on her forehead like that. And um, you can rotate your brush using this little circle guide here. And again, you can kind of play around with it. But my advice to you before you even do any of the cracks is make a new layer. So in your layers panel, hit that plus sign with the box to make a new layer on top so that let's say you make a crack across her face. You can easily, because it's on a different layer, erase the excess parts that might have gone off her face or Maybe you don't like this area here and you can put a crack there. Um, so it's totally up to you on how you want to do this project. But the whole reason for me doing this tutorial is to show you Photoshop actions and show you the value in it. So if you have any questions, feel free to email me.